hold your head up and dry your tears. You have nothing to be ashamed of. If you want to begin to move, you've got to clear your mind of all the unnecessary luggage and baggage that's weighing us down. Let it go and begin to focus on developing myself. And I say to you, you're going to have people to do things to you. Things are going to happen to you. And the most important thing to do is to harness your will and let it go and move so you can grow, so you can get on with your life. It doesn't matter about what happens to you. What matters is, what are you going to do about it? If you keep hanging out with negative people and you keep constantly listening to negative talk radio and watching negative talk news, guess what? It's going to infect you with fear. Some of you need to go on a diet of negativity. Stop filling your mind with negative words from television, radio, news, internet, social media. Let me ask you a personal question. What secret fear is causing you to be discouraged? Is there anybody in this building that's tired of being discontent? And you want to be able to say, if I get my way, I'm going to be happy. If I don't get my way, I'm going to be happy. I'm not going to let my circumstances control my moods. I am content and emotionally stable. That is my goal, to be content and emotionally stable. Your life is a seed. The seed has to be coupled with a healthy environment. The seed has to go into the soil. It has to be healthy soil. The seed needs water. The seed needs sunlight. See, you and I are the same thing. We're a seed. We have to connect it to a community of people that are healthy and vibrant and believe the best really is in store for us. See, because you're kind of saying, I'm over it. But if you would share your calling, the moment you say, I'm over it, you would have somebody else walk up to you and say, wait a minute, let me, let me just shed some light onto that dark area so that you can grow again. You're not quitting today. You're not quitting tomorrow. You're going to run this race of faith and you're not going to give up. Greatness is not popularity. It's not how many Twitter followers you have. It's not how many Instagram people you have. How many of you know some of the celebrities have millions and millions, but they're not great because of their popularity? Never sacrifice greatness for popularity. If you get busy worrying about, does everybody know how good I am and how great I am, you'll sacrifice your greatness for popularity. Greatness just does what it does, and people discover the greatness. They see it in you. You just got to go through exercises like this. Take the notes, work hard, roll up your sleeves, go to work, gather the knowledge in journals, gather the knowledge in notebooks, gather the knowledge in a library. And don't be lazy in learning. It doesn't take much faith to give God glory when all your bills are paid. You don't have to be real strong when everything is well in your life. But when the bottom falls out, when sickness comes, when trials and difficulties come, when your health starts to fail, when your children break your heart, when difficulties, tough times, hard days, long nights, it is then that your faith kicks in to let you know that he's a very present help in the time of trouble. Now listen, hidden greatness is usually revealed during hardships. Usually you will not discover greatness in a person until they go through hardship. It's the hardship, the crisis, that brings greatness out of people. The hard places reveal hidden greatness. Hidden greatness will get in trouble and rise to the occasion. Maybe you're unhappy right now with your current job. Maybe you're unhappy with your health, or, or maybe you're unhappy with the season of life you find yourself in. Has it ever occurred to you that you are not there by coincidence, but rather you are there by providence? Has it ever occurred to you that God has a plan, that he's putting the puzzle together, and that you must recognize, regardless of the season, I am here for such a time as this. See, there's a reason for your season. There's purpose in your pain. There is a design in the disaster. There's hope in the hurt. There's life even after death. I think it's time for a tournament. Dreams motivate us. 
Dreams energize us. In all of your getting, get a dream in your life. Get it from God, and then you become unstoppable. A dream is the inward picture of the future you desire. And don't underestimate it. And don't act like it's not important. And when God is going to do something in your life, he'll give you a picture first on the inside of where you're going before you ever get there. So as you begin to look at life, as you begin to look at the things you want to do, decide that you're going to become the active force in your life. Decide that you're not going to go through life feeling like a victim. Decide that when things become challenging, that you're not going to personalize it, that you're going to look at it, and you do whatever you must do in order to work things out and learn from it. That's the key. You will always be faced with a series of God-ordained opportunities, brilliantly disguised as problems and challenges. We all have things that come against us and try to keep us from our destiny. Most of what we struggle with didn't start with us. It was passed down. Things like depression, anger, divorce. Studies show how that can get passed from generation to generation. If your mother was depressed, there's a good chance you'll have to deal with depression. Just like a lady that's on drugs and gives birth to a baby, that baby can have the same addiction as the mother. It was no fault of the babies, it's just life. What you're dealing with may not have started with you, but it can stop with you. God wants to give you rest from those enemies. As long as we accept dysfunction as the norm, it will never change. If you see that depression, that lack and struggle as your lot in life, you'll not only get stuck, but you'll pass it on to the next generation. Because crying and complaining is not going to stop the trial. Murmuring and groaning is not going to stop the trial. And the purposes that God wants to work out in our lives may include trials, setbacks, heartbreak. It may mean that you have to stay sick a while. It may mean that you have to go through it a while. Use your power to change things, not to complain about your situation. Use your power to recreate things, not talking about where you are and the state of the condition. Use your power because you've been given authority and dominion over everything. Exercise it, don't give it away. And you know what? Those days are good for us. It's good to go through those days. Do not despise the day of small beginnings. And don't complain your way through small beginnings. Because if we cannot learn to be thankful for those things, trust me, you will not be thankful when God gives you more. Because going through the hard times and remaining thankful builds character in us that we need to remain stable when God gives us more to be responsible for. You've got to get the word. Happiness is something you design. Happiness is a study. Happiness is a practice. Happiness is an art. It's not an accident. It's an art. And anybody that wants to can study, practice the art of happy living. Happiness is like culture. Money doesn't make you cultured, but culture is within the grasp of all of us. All you have to be is committed to it and make it a study. Culture is a study. Sophistication is a study. It's not an amount. It's not an account. It's a study. Money doesn't make you sophisticated. Only study and practice makes you sophisticated. And only study and practice makes you happy. Study and practice makes you rich. Key phrase, don't be lazy in learning. One, how to do well. Next, how to live well. Don't be lazy in learning and practicing the art of economics and practicing the art of lifestyle. Well, let me share something with you. Take life seriously. Life has no duplicate. Decide as you look at your life as you determine what is it that the next greatest version of myself, what does that look like? You have to monitor and manage the priorities in your life. Guess what number one is? Your state of mind. As long as you accept the dysfunction, and even when God sends you a way out, you'll talk yourself out of it. You think it's normal to live depressed, addicted, angry, lonely, this is a new day. You may have been ruled by those things for years. They may have been passed down by previous generations, but that is not your destiny. What's limited you in the past 
doesn't have to limit you in the future. You can rise out of lack, struggle, not having enough. You have seeds of greatness. You were created to lend and not borrow. You can be free from depression, low self-esteem, insecurity. Don't let limited thinking keep you from your destiny. And I know it's hard to hear, but keep on believing in that voice. Deep in your soul that's whispering, I'm going to make it. I'm going to make it. You do this, and I have no doubt that you too can become something else. And if you have to defy gravity to catch your dream, then you'll grow wings. There's something magical about you. It's time to discover that. There's some things that you can accomplish that you can't see right now. My favorite book says, eye has not seen, ear has not heard, nor has entered the heart of mankind what God has in store for you. When you're willing to say yes, when you're willing to move forward, life will respond to you. Mindset transformation is very important. Be not conformed to this world, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. You don't want to think like everybody else. You want uncommon thinking. Expand your skill set. Every other voice may be negative, telling you how you're not going to get better. You feel alone, isolated, it means you're in the wrong stadium. The enemy has a stadium filled with accusers, discouragers, don't go there. That's the opponent's stadium. Your game is being played on the home field. Everyone in these stands is pulling for you. Your feelings don't matter. You may feel like doing something, maybe you don't feel like doing something, doesn't matter. Get out there and do what you're supposed to do, whether you feel like it or not.